miracle de ma vie, c'est la France. C'est ce que déclare Israël Horowitz, le dramaturge américain contemporain le plus joué dans notre pays. Sa pièce, trois semaines après le paradis, mise en scène par Ladislas Chola, est à l'affiche du théâtre Le Petit Héberto à Paris. Le 11 septembre, vécu comme un drame intime. Celui d'un père sans nouvelles de son fils, dont l'école jouxte les deux tours jumelles qui viennent de s'effondrer. Dans son journal intime, entièrement habité par la figure du père, il évoque la violence du sien, la démence de celui d'Al Pacino et le père qu'il s'est choisi, Samuel Beckett. Et lui, craignant pour son fils ce 11 septembre 2001, comme tous les pères du monde dont les enfants sont confrontés au terrorisme ou à la guerre. I was born, je suis né dans le Massachusetts. My father's father, I, I never met, I came close. But just uh, a week or so before I was born, he died. He had a cancer. And my grandmother, my aunt, and my cousin uh, went on a plane to collect his body, and their plane crashed in the Ozark Mountains, and they were all killed. So when people ask me uh, why my plays are comic and tragic, Au même temps, at the same time, it's obvious to me. My father was a chauffeur de camion uh, through his life. And when he was 50 years old, he went to law school at night and he became an advocat in, in our little town. He really hated his life. It was really... Uh, it's, it's difficult for me to feel terribly sorry for him, but because... Uh, for a long period of time, I think I hated my life when I was a kid. I felt that my role, uh, my purpose for being on Earth was really to stop my father from killing my mother when I was a little kid. Well, they were both quite violent with each other. I mean, Wordsworth said we become what we behold, and I don't know whether it was my mother who was violent first or my father, but I can remember them standing with, with you know, bread knives in their hands when I was just a little kid. And so I felt that uh, that's why I was really on Earth when I was five or six years old, was just to stop this violence. When I was 25 or 26 years old, I wrote a play called Land in the Bronx, and it was, uh, we did it in New York with Al Pacino. And Pacino and I and Clayburgh, and we were all kids, and we were all uh, completely inconnu. He was fantastic. I mean, it, it, it's, when you see somebody like that, you know there's a kind of aura of lights and something very special. He was working as a janitor. I don't know, come, come concierge, but more just cleaning uh, in a building near Central Park. And, uh, I, and he was living au sous -sol down the, in the basement of this place, like a rat. His teeth were quite bad. It was, I probably, my father's violence was a good thing then because it gave me a, tre it gave me a tremendous energy. Al Pacino had the same, the same problem with a crazy father and then he was living on the, str the streets when he was a kid. About 10 years ago, the father appeared <laughs> in his life and said, hello, I'm Sal Pacino, I'm your father. And it's the same visage, absolutely the même visage. The father did a workout video on television, you know, <laughs> doing aerobics, it's crazy. It's, it's comic and tragic au même temps. I think in this life we have um, our fathers of choice and our fathers of chance. Your real father and your father of choice being the one you choose and you say, uh, c'est mon père du choix, I wish he were my father. And for me it was, it was Beckett. So I remember uh, seeing him for the first time and he, he had uh, terrible uh, cataracts and he looked like an owl, he had a lot of trouble seeing and, and uh, I went to introduce myself and instead, instead of saying hello to me, he said, I prefer rats. J'avais écrit une pièce s'appelle Des rats. He was very direct, instead of saying hello, he said, I prefer rats. He had no children and 
so I'm sure there was something for him too. And we stayed together for, I suppose, three hours talking about writing and <laughs> being a playwright. And, and the fact that I was a young guy, I already had kids and it was such a, a struggle. I said to him at the end, it's, it embarrasses me now, but I can remember when we were saying goodbye, I said to him, do you think we could be friends? <laughs> he said, oh, I think we are friends. Je commence à écrire cette, ce texte trois semaines après 11 septembre. I'm very happy that the, this text uh, exists as a piece de théâtre. Trois semaines après le paradis, it's really about um, a father who realizes that, who wants to, il voudrait protéger ses enfants, but he realizes it's impossible. My son was uh, in school at Stuyvesant High School, just across the, the, the road. For three hours, I didn't know whether my son was dead or alive. I it just, it was impossible to know whether the tower had fallen onto his school or whether it had imploded and gone straight down. Of course, it's exactly the same for un père Iraqien, un père Israelien, un père Palestinian, for anybody who's just in this kind of circumstance. Because for me, September 11th, uh, as a kind of catastrophe, was really nothing. It's 3,000 people. I mean, for, for 3,000 families, it's, there's no bigger catastrophe for sure. But in the scheme of things, it's, it's like every day in Iraq with this uh, insupportable war. It's not even a war, it's just a kind of murder.